cash flow forecasting this is a key technique to learn in this 3.3 section working capital we need to be able to construct a cash flow forecast from given information a typical structure looks something like this you will have to create it often and you're going to put months along the top there and you're going to look for inflows cash inflows and cash outflows the information we provided you just need to construct the table and plug in the information now opening balance will look information will be given here money in the bank at the end of June five thousand dollars money at the end of June becomes the opening balance for the start of July plug it in we next need to be able to identify the types of inflows now the types of inflows that we can identify from the information given in our exam questions we'll be able to plug those into our table cash sales revenue July through to December we're selling significant amounts each month we'll just put those into the appropriate month so cash sales revenue July 6,000, August 5,000, September 6,500, October 6,800, November 7,500, and December a whopping 9.5,000. Looks like we've got some additional income coming into the business here that's not created from cash sales. November rental income of $4,000. Simply under other income in November, that $4,000 goes in. Cash inflows done, dusted, moving on to cash outflows now. The purchase of new stock to sell. So we've got to buy in stock before we can sell it. Looks like every single month, July, August, September, October, November, December, we are buying in stock to sell. Just put them in the appropriate column. A purchase of stocks. Bang, bang, bang. Staff wages of three and a half thousand per month need to be paid. A cash outflow. Plug them in. And there's some additional costs here as well. All other costs. This will be the electricity, the rent, etc., etc. So all other costs, two thousand a month. October and November a little bit different. A little bit less. One thousand eight hundred. And December a little bit more perhaps uh, for whatever reason a little bit more all we're going to do is use that information plug it into the other cost section into the appropriate monthly column and we have our inflows outflows identified and placed in the table that's all the information that the IB business and management exam is likely to provide for you you need to go and be able to complete the rest of the table we'll start with total cash inflows and we'll just sum these month by month and it's going to be very easy November is the only time where we have to do a little bit of mass so July total cash inflows are 6,000 in August they're 5 September 6.5 October 6.8,000 and November is the only month we've got to do some summing for our total cash inflows they turn to be turn out to be eleven and a half thousand dollars. Total cash inflows identified, summed, moved to cash total cash outflows. And again, we just sum our total cash outflows, our, our outflows to get our total cash outflow. Total cash out inflows per month, total cash outflows per month sorted. We can move on to net cash flow, which is simply our inflows less the outflows coming in. Now it's standard convention to put any negative numbers in brackets. So if you see a bracket surrounding a number, it indicates that it's got a negative value. And straight away we'll see we'll have a neg negative net cash flow for July. 6,000 inflow 
8,000 of cash outflows, leaving us with negative 2,000. August 5,000 minus 7.7 .7 will give us negative 2.7. September it's still negative, we've got 6.5 coming in, 8.2 leaving. October negative again, 6.8 total cash inflows, 8,000 cash outflows, a negative cash flow for that month of 1,200. You can see the business is struggling. It's borderline, it's borderline. Other rental income comes in and saves it in November. Um, total, uh, our net cash flows for November turn positive again, and they're slightly positive again in December with those increased sales numbers coming through. Almost there. All we need to do now is calculate the closing balance and transfer that through to the opening balance of the following month. So in July we started with $5,000 and we had net cash flows of negative $2,000. So our bank balance would have been eroded and leaving us with only $3,000 in the bank at the end of July. End of July closing balance transfers through to the start of August, $3,000. We lose in net cash flow in the month of August 2.7. So that just leaves us $300 at the end of August. Getting into trouble now. September, the, our opening balance $300, $300 in the bank. And a closing balance. We're into overdraft territory now. So $1.4,000. We owe the bank. That transfers through to the start of October, our opening balance. Deeper into the red now, deeper into our overdraft. At the end of October, we've got a, a negative balance in our bank and we lose addi additional cash as well. So at the end of October, our overdraft is extended to 2600 That's in the red, that's money we owe the bank. And that transfers to the start of November opening balance. At the end of November we finally turn positive again. We've got a net cash flow of $3,200 which cancels out our overdraft, puts us slightly into the black. End of November our closing balance of $600, transfer that through to the opening balance at the start of December, $600. Add the $500 in net cash flows for December and we've got a closing balance at the end of the year of $1,100. So simple enough once we've got the structure of the cash flow forecast in our brain. So the structure is important. You learn that plugging in the numbers is relatively easy. The calculations are dead easy. The structure, the structure, the structure is what you will have to practice. Right, steps quickly. We've run through them already. We're identifying what's leaving the business, so cash, oh, what's coming in, sorry, cash inflows. What's leaving the business, our cash outflows, identifying both of those sources. We need to calculate the total inflows, calculate the total outflows. This will lead us in a position to calculate our net cash flows. Remember that's total cash inflows minus total cash outflows per month. So calculate a net cash flow for each month. Once we've done that, we can subtract that or add that to our closing balance. And transfer the closing balance to the opening balance of the following month. Easy. I'm surprised students get it wrong all the time. <laughs>